Hey Retail Business Owners, welcome to this week's training video and uh, this week it's all about understanding the numbers in your business. So I'm calling this the Financial Clarity Blueprint and like always there is a worksheet associated with this or if you want to copy of the presentation just pop the word worksheet in the comments section below and uh, I'll make sure that either myself or the team get it out to you. So you know Financial Clarity is actually one of those things that many of us because we haven't really gone to business school, it's not something we really understand. Many of us come from another kind of background. Like for me, I was trained as a pharmacist, as you know. And so, you know, nobody really taught me about financial clarity and nobody really taught me about the importance of finances and really understanding what's underneath the hood uh, in our businesses and, and why that is important when you're starting to run and especially grow a bricks and mortar retail store. And, you know, I was running into, a, and I'm sure many of you are, running into some really, really big problems when it uh, came to running my store. I really had problems making decisions and, you know, trying to really understand what I should do next because without a clear financial picture, I didn't, I wasn't able to make informed decisions about what I could in, invest in into the store what I could use to grow my business or how I would go about uh, doing cost cutting measures. So, oh, I've just jumped a gun. So, I mean, these are one of the, you know, one of the key problems uh, that, that happens when you run a bricks and mortar store. The other one, of course, as we all know, is cash flow issues, right? So poor visibility into cash flow can lead to an unexpected financial crisis. It's going to be very hard for you to manage your day-to-day -day operations and meet your financial obligations, especially paying your team members and, of course, paying your suppliers and ultimately paying yourself. When you really don't know what's happening under the hood of your business, so if you have really bad financial clarity, it, it hampers your development and long-term growth strategies. Like, how do you even know what you need to implement or how do you go about implementing it? if you really don't have a baseline level for what's happening under the hood of the business. And really, the, the other big problem that we have as retailers, whoops, is that many of us tend to overspend in our business. And why are we overspending? Really, because we've got no real empirical way of knowing how much where we need to spend. We perhaps don't even have a budget. And it makes it very, very challenging to run our business. And ultimately, we're just running our business on the fly. So I don't need to tell you why this happens. I think for many retailers, like I've harped on previously, it's just that we've, we are doing so many things within our store. And as I mentioned, many of us aren't even trained in how to do this thing. So it makes it very, very challenging to even think about setting up some sort of system if we're too busy putting out fires within our store and covering shifts and doing all the things that we think we need to do within our store. And so it's not until you sort of hit that breaking point and that breaking point typically is when you've run out of cash. So when you're in a real cash flow situation and you reach out and get some help or really what I'm hoping is you're really at that next stage of growth where you want to take your store to the next level. And believe it or not, you'll be so surprised on how many retailers don't have this sorted and it's such a fundamental aspect of running your bricks and mortar store. And in fact, it's a fundamental aspect of running any business really is to make sure that you know what's happening under the hood. So there are some of the causes and why this might be happening in your store, right? And uh, like I mentioned, it's very, very common. So if we get this right, if we get this whole financial clarity point right within our, within our business, it's going to allow us to make some really, really key decisions in our store. We are going to know exactly what the numbers are. We're going to have much great, greater clarity on our cash flow. And I'm going to talk about cash flow properly in depth again in another couple of weeks. But really, the overall overarching theme here is understanding the black hole that is your store and where all the cash is going. But once you get that sorted out, it just leads to so many other decisions that you can make properly. Like you will know when you can invest in your business. You will know how to manipulate uh, the business so that you can increase your cash flow just by, by doing that. So if you get all these things right, you're not only going to have a more profitable store, you're going to have much, much more cash flow. And you're going to have a, a business, hopefully, 
is which is something that you want that you can start to set up so that it starts to run without you and by having some key uh, key performance um, indicators. But I'm jumping the gun again. So um, let's let's go into so that's what happens when you get it right. Let's go into now on what you need to do. Okay. So flat financial clarity, like just think about it, is the stairway. It's basically the path that you need to take, that you need to have set up in your business that makes everything clear. And my God, just by having some clarity in one aspect of your business, and of course, you know, many of you know I work on three aspects, but this whole visibility side, this financial clarity component really is just like wearing x-ray glasses, right? It just gives you such an in-depth knowledge of your business. It sounds so basic, but it's something that we often often forget. So here's what we need to do. Uh, the first thing is, like I alluded to, whoops. Okay, we'll start with number two first. Ha! Uh, let's talk about margin analysis. Looks like I stuffed this up. Uh, so basically, we need to get into a system of understanding the margins within our store. So uh, we are retailers and understanding margin is critical to our success because of the stock that we carry. But what do I what do I mean by margin analysis? And that's really making sure that we have a system in place weekly that we're going through all our products and going through the products that we sold the previous week and making sure that we sold them at a sufficient margin. It sounds so simple, but this process is often overlooked and we need to be using our point of sale systems to the maximum ability so that we can regularly review this information. Uh, I'm sure you know that many times we price things incorrectly, inadvertently, this happens, uh, whether we're doing it manually or whether we are downloading pricing from the supplier. Also, the update process sometimes can be manual and we might enter the wrong thing, the wrong price into our post system. and we. We have no way of knowing if we're selling a product at a loss unless we do this process. This process is also really, really important to stay on top of because this is one of the surefire ways that you can start to pick out subcategories and categories and product categories within your store that you can start to look at to start to increase margins. Is one of the increasing margins is one of my big pieces in profitability, which we'll talk about uh, in a few months' time. But really just getting into the habit of analyzing your margins on a weekly basis. I can't remember who said this, but what gets measured gets managed. And making sure that you have a system for this is so important. So regularly conduct a margin analysis and regularly create a system for margin analysis so that it gets done every week. And, you know, systems are so important. Not, uh, where do I, where do I, go with this. But I think the main thing about system is the leverage that it will provide you later on, because you do not want to be as a bricks and mortar retail business owner doing this stuff on the day to day grind in the in the beginning, surely, but later on down the track, you want to make sure that this is transferable to your other team members, to your retail manager, to other management within your store. And if you set this up right, this allows you to take a step back and allows you to focus on the big picture stuff so that you can start to grow your business. Right. So margin analysis, that's what you need to do. You need to come up with a system to that to do that on a weekly, um, every week. Huh. The next thing you need to do is to get better financial clarity of your business is to make sure that you start looking at your cash flow regularly. What do I mean by regularly? So as bricks and mortar retailers, we need to be doing this every week. I would argue that most businesses need to do this every week. Understanding the flow of cash, especially if you're in a cash flow funk, is imperative. It will show you by having a way of tracking your cash flow. So you want to make sure that you've got some sort of system in place to track your cash flow. So this goes beyond what your accountant or your bookkeeper might do for you. Certainly, they will prefer, uh, prepare a cash flow statement, which is different. A statement of cash flow is different. What we actually want to do is track the flow of cash through your business in real time. And when I say real time, I'm going back to the weekly thing. And this is so powerful because this will identify to you where your cash is going. And having a system for that is so important. Once you start to track your cash flow, then we get to this magic thing, a magic way of then 
forecasting your cash flow. So forecasting is really important because once you have a set of data that you've been using to track your cash flow, you can essentially start to predict out what might happen. And it's super useful for doing things like perhaps you want to make a capital investment in your business. I don't know. You want to buy something or you want to lease out something. But what is the effect of that purchase and those leasing payments going to be for the rest of your business? How much can you actually spend? And you can once you start to forecast your cash flow, you can in your for, in your spreadsheet or whatever system that you're using, you can start to manipulate these and the data, and you can see what the long term effects are going to be. And the main thing is you can start to make some strategic decisions on whether this is a good idea or not. So um, that's really really important. I I can't stress enough here that this is something that you need to do physically. I think it's uh, I, before you start handing it over to another member of your team and get on top of it, track it weekly, track it in a way that makes sense to you so that you can start using it to make some insightful decisions into your store. All right, so it's margin analysis. So the third part of financial clarity in our business is making sure that we have some meaningful KPIs. Key performance indicators are so important. Many of us uh, resist key performance indicators. I guess this is uh, something that we're not really trained with, but uh, to do, I beg your pardon. But KPIs, uh, you need to think about your store with as levers. And what are the main levers within your store that you can start to pull and manipulate to actually drive cash flow, drive profitability, drive sales? And it's very, very important. This by spending the time to really think about key performance indicators, you will then start to really have great amount of financial clarity to what is happening under the hood because you're just ta you've taken the time to think about what are the metrics that are, that are going to move your store forward. And you will not believe how many bricks and mortar retailers don't even take the time to think about KPIs. Uh, once you have thought about them, and once you've narrowed it down, and when I say narrow, narrow it down, uh, some of us do have KPIs, but we have a gajillion KPIs with our point of sale software and with our accounting software, it's very, very easy to uh, get overloaded with numbers. So there's there's a, a nice balance that we need to have between uh, the metrics in our business and what's going to be overwhelming because ultimately we need to use these key performance indicators to drive our business forward, like I've said. So we want to make sure that it's really, really relevant, not only for the business, but also for us as the bricks and mortar retail business owner. So we've determined our KPIs. Uh, I recommend no more than six. It's going to be store dependent, but there are some overarching KPIs uh, that you need to have. And after that, it's really about tracking your KPIs. So there's no use in having these metrics unless we're not we're not presenting it to ourselves in a way that makes useful sense. And the best way to do this is to track it, obviously. And so tracking it weekly. I think if uh, as retailers, we need to be doing all of this stuff weekly to get clarity. So making sure that we have some sort of system to track our KPIs, keeping it really, really simple as well is really key here. So the great thing about KPIs, once you start, once you get into the habit of doing this, this is actually a task, the tracking of and the reporting of that you can hand off to your team. Your team, once you find team members that are actively engaged in your store, you can start sharing the numbers with your team members. And by giving responsibilities to them to track these numbers and then present it to the team, it just gives them a whole level of ownership. And maybe you might be thinking, oh, I don't want to share the numbers of the business with my uh, employees. Well, I would encourage you to rethink that. Uh, in one of my subsequent trainings, I'll run through that in greater depth. But really what you're doing is you're being transparent. And by giving your team members ownership of your store, you're actually driving them to perform much better because now all of a sudden they've got a vested interest there. You can gamify the situation as well. This whole, you know, it just gives them more accountability and accountability with the right team players is increase leads to an increase in profitability. The great thing also about KPIs is now 
if once you start to take a step back and work on the business, you can start to by tracking these KPIs, you can you can then then start to mani manipulate them. What do I mean by that? One of the great KPIs that we track, uh, which I recommend that you track, is average dollar sales. So if, if it starts to dip, if, then we can start to say, hey, what is happening within our store? Are we not implementing the strategies or perhaps it's time to implement a new strategy? And once you start to implement new strategies and systems within your store uh, to track particular KPIs, um, then you can actually start to see the results. So you actually know empirically what is working and what is not working rather than flying off the city of pants and just doing things from the hip. So really, really important that we set up KPIs. Um, yeah, so we're just about to land this spaceship home. So just remember, if you want a copy of this, uh, the worksheet, just pop the word worksheet below and we will get it out to you. So in summary, if we want greater financial clarity within our store and we want to start to hit home runs, um, we need to make sure that we look beyond revenue, that yes, revenue is great, but really we need to understand the clarity. Uh, we need to understand the numbers within our bricks and mortar store. We need to start thinking under the hood, what's actually happening and what's actually going on. And the main thing is we need to start to take action now. So you need to get this process implemented within your store and you need to start um, rolling this out ASAP. So there you go. Now, hopefully that give you, gives you some sort of direction. That was my intention on what you need to do to get better financial clarity of what's happening under the hood in your store. And I hope you found that useful. Like I said, if you want a copy of the worksheet, just pop the word worksheet below. If you want some help with this stuff in your business, just send me a message or write the word help below. And uh, we'll make sure we uh, will reach out to you. Uh, until next time, catch you later.